Norman Fairclough, born 1941, is an emeritus professor of linguistics at Lancaster University in England. He is one of the founders of Critical Discourse Analysis, CDA, as applied to sociolinguistics. CDA is concerned with how power is exercised through language. Critical discourse analysis is an interdisciplinary approach to the study of discourse that views language as a form of social practice. Norman Fairclough assumes that any case of language is a communicative event. He has developed a model for critical discourse analysis. The model consists of three categories, in this model called dimensions. The three dimensions may be summarised as follows. The first dimension is called text. Text can be speech, writing, images, or a mixture of all three forms of communication. We call this an analysis at word level. The second dimension is called discursive practice. Discursive practice involves production of texts or constitution of texts. Here, the analysis takes place at the text level. The third and last dimension is called social practice. Social practice is about standards of society or the organisation. In effect, social structures. Here, it is an analysis of what we call the norm level. Fairclough's analytical approach assumes that language helps create change and can be used to change behaviour. Language becomes a power tool. This is what is meant by discourse analysis. Now let us look at some examples of the three dimensions. The first dimension is called text. Discourse is the collection of words and characters we choose when we write or speak. By choosing certain words, we show our attitude to the subject. Let us look at some explanations. For example, my neighbour was an old witch, or my neighbour was an old woman, or my neighbour was an old lady. In the choice of which woman or lady, I express an attitude towards the neighbour. When we choose our words, we express an attitude. Whether a person is a terrorist or a freedom fighter, depends on our view of the action that has taken place. Discourse is about language as a community. The words we choose make us feel that we are part of a community. A person who is from a different point of origin may for one group be a stranger, for another group a foreigner, and for a third group, a refugee. Discourse analysis is about text analysis and that any text contains interpretations. Dimension 2 By critical discourse analysis, we understand that language can be a bearer of change. The words we use and the way we compose our sentences are of importance. The way we talk about a subject can change our view of the subject. Text is almost always subject to interpretation. Language is not neutral and innocent. It often contains values, attitudes and assessments that the sender will convey to the recipient. Dimension 3 Language creates opinions and characterises our attitudes. 
It creates social relationships and practices. Languages are associated with power. Languages are part of our communication. Communication is a social event and the language and the choice of words forms the context of our social community. Languages and communication are also closely linked to the society in which we are located. In this connection, society can be an organisation where there are certain norms and traditions. Dimension 3 may apply to the entire organisation for certain subjects, while it is at departmental level for other subjects. In certain special cases, Dimension 3 applies to transnational companies. It requires a very strong company culture. Emirates Airlines, IKEA and McDonald's could be examples. Let's look at a case about a fire and rescue company with stations in every major city in the country. The country in which the stations are placed has a low context culture. The company is more than 100 years old and there are lots of traditions in the company. One of these is an annual New Year speech for the employees. The speech is read by the local leader at the New Year's parade at all stations at exactly the same hour. The speech is also subsequently included in the staff magazine and posted online on the company's website afterwards. This particular New Year's speech in question was written and held at a time when there was a structural reform from the government that would affect the company severely and the speech became a means of communicating change. It was a reform to the framework for the delivery of public and private services, where the company in future would compete with other companies for their services, where they had previously had a monopoly. If we look at the speech through the Fairclough Critical Discourse Analysis, we have an analysis as follows. The CEO has chosen to develop a speech that is unifying, encouraging, paternal, and which also includes attitudes towards how the company should be regarded by the employees. The CEO is the sender of the speech, and the speech is an expression of how management views this structural change. Here we will look at a few word choices in the speech, the word level that shows something about the intent of management and its translation. We proceed with dimension one of the model, word level. Talking to employees can give a picture of a solemn and old-fashioned ritual in the company, with words like tradition, believe and the past year. We have a stable and old business in front of us. Later in the speech, words such as deep thanks to the employees, the CEO appears to be humble. It gives both a recognisable tone and is partly family-oriented and educative. We get a picture of a very traditional company with a management that sets the agenda. With sentences like, we are not here for our own sake, and because there are some people in society who need us, and later in the speech, but we must also be aware that others do better and help cheaper, so our entitlement is no longer applicable. Here we have management's view that the firefighters and the paramedics of the company work out of idealism and as heroes as in the first sentence, we are not here for our own sake. And the next sentence, 
we must also be aware that there are changes on the way and it is no longer enough to be an idealistic rescuer. The words and the way the speech is written is what we seek to understand by analysing the text and thus dimension one in Fairclough's model. Dimension two. The discursive practice in the New Year's speech is the way it is produced. The form, thus speaking and not writing. Also, the author of the speech draws on other discourses in the text. This is to say whether the author may have borrowed passages from other speeches. For example, the Queen's New Year speech as when the Queen says, A society like ours would not be able to function if there was no one who stayed at their post to ensure peace of mind for all of us on New Year's Eve. We wish them all a happy New Year and thank them for their efforts. Here we have threads that lead back to We are not here for our own sake, but because there is someone in society who needs us. Dimension 3. Social practice. Social practice is about the norms and traditions of the fire and rescue company. The language really works in a company which has a patriarchal and organisational structure with authoritarian leadership at the top. A kind of family structure where the father is speaking to his children. In a young dynamic IT company, this kind of solemn speech, which was subsequently included in a staff magazine, would not work. Social practice is thus different from one industry to another. And also, within the industry, there are major differences in social practice. Let us now take a look at a criticism of the model. Fairclough's critical discourse analysis model is difficult to understand and use, and much literature has been written about it. In this video, we have solely discussed the principles of the model to form an understanding framework for it, and its use for the analysis of change. It works differently from culture to culture. Especially be careful with transfers between low and high context culture. Sometimes it's about what's not being said or written. Fairclough's critical discourse analysis is very useful when you need to figure out what the sender wants to convey to the recipients and what behaviour does the sender want from the recipients.